Whether you are a lumberjack or pitmaster looking for lumber, a forager looking for next season's fruit, or a naturalist wanting to learn more about the forest around you, learning to identify trees in the wintertime is a pivotal skill. It can be one of the most difficult skills to grasp, especially without any guidance. So in this video, we're going to learn how to make it easy and approachable by studying the key details to look for when distinguishing buds from one another, starting with arrangement. But wait, before we begin, you want to get the most out of this video, right? If so, before continuing, go outside and find a tree, any tree with buds on it, and then clip one off and bring it back with you to follow along in the video with the details that we're about to cover. At the end, you can then comment on the characteristics of your bud and we can identify it together. All right, so now that you're ready, let's get started by looking at the arrangement. This is always the first detail that I look for, no matter the season, because it quickly divides and minimizes the pass that you may have to go down for an ID, especially if the tree has an oppositely arranged bud, because there aren't many trees with that arrangement. So check your bud's arrangement. It may be opposite, like this buckeye or ash bud, or alternating, like this slippery elm bud. If we were using the leaves for identification, we would also check if they're compound or simple. Without the leaves, we of course cannot do that. However, at the end of the video, I'm gonna share a trick to guess the compounding of a leaf with high accuracy from just the twig. The next detail that we will look at is bud scales, which protect the immature leaf or flower that are on the inside. There are four varieties of bud scales that you are likely to come across. No scales or a naked bud, like this pawpaw. One single scale, which is usually only found on willows two scales or a valvate bud like this tulip poplar and many scales or an implicate bud like this sweet gum. The next two details go together. They are leaf scar and bundle scar. Leaf scars are found directly below the bud and are left behind from where the previous season's leaf has broken off. They come in many shapes and sizes from very large and wide on a tree of heaven to very small and thin like on the sugar maple. And within them, there are tiny dots called bundle scars, where the actual vascular tissue was connected. Some veins leave a single bundle scar, like the sassafras, whereas others may have numerous, like this tree of heaven. I particularly like to find sweet gum buds because you can distinctively see three bundle scars. If you hadn't noticed already, some of these details can be very, very tiny. A loop is a great tool to help you to be able to see them better. One of the most overlooked details is the pith of the twig. So the term twig is often used flippantly in English to describe any tiny stick, but we need to turn to a more technical definition for looking at pith. The University of Georgia provides a definition of a twig as the current or most recent season's extension growth. This is contrasted with a branchlet, which is from the second or third year's growth, and then there's a branch, which is from the fourth year's growth or greater. If we take a lateral cross section of a twig, we will expose the pith on the inside, which comes in different varieties. The first one is a solid pith, so it just looks woody on the inside. Many trees have this characteristic, including this shagbark hickory. Some are spongy or corky on the inside, distinctively different from the wood that is surrounding it, like this ash tree. The next two are my favorite. The first is diaphragmed, which is spongy, but with separating partitions on the inside, like this tulip poplar. And then there's chambered, which is a lot like diaphragm. However, it is hollowed with partitions that separate it, as you can see with this black walnut. Last, it could be completely hollow on the inside, like this honeysuckle. By the end of this video, you'll have learned most of the details needed to read a key to leafless trees in a field guide. If you are in Eastern North America, then I highly recommend the Peterson Field Guide to Eastern Trees. I always look out for the hairiness of buds and twigs. In the case of distinguishing slippery elm from American elm, it's one of the most apparent details to look for. Just look at how hairy the slippery elm bud is in comparison with the complete other side, which is this smooth and shiny sweet gum bud. A term that you may run into is the presence or lack of a true terminal bud. A true terminal bud is the definitive termination of a twig and is where growth will begin the following spring. It's not always easy to tell, but here are two tricks. 
A twig with a true terminal bud will tend to be straighter and false ones more zigzagged. And further, a true terminal bud is typically much larger than the other buds on the twig that are not terminal. Finally, there is if a leaf is compound or simple, which is one of the crucial steps for identifying a tree by their leaves, but we don't have those. So how on earth can we tell from just the buds? While we cannot be certain, by paying close attention to the size of a bud's leaf scar, we can get a solid guess as to whether the leaf is compound or simple. A compound leaf will typically form a much larger leaf scar with greater than three bundle scars than that of a simple one. Equipped with the knowledge from this video, you should have a solid foundation for identifying trees by their buds. So why not test out your new skills by scouting out some elm trees for the coming morale season? If you'd like to do that, you have to watch this video right here.